Our Father, we thank you because you are always doing us great things. You are always making us happy, so joyful. Because we are in you, we bless your holy name. Thank you, Lord, for redeeming us. By grace, we are saved. Not of us, not of works, so that we cannot boast. Thank you because you have brought us this morning again into your house. We've worshipped you, we are worshipping you, and we want to feast again at your table. That living bread, our Savior. Lord, may you by your spirit break unto us this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we ask that it will not be something we are adding to our daughter, but that we add something new to our lives. A new insight. A new impartation. So that we can live out the grace that you have imparted unto us in Jesus' name. Give us hearing ears. Give us the heart that perceives and the willingness to do your will. For we have prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. I want to speak with us this morning on grace in true perspective. Grace in true perspective. The word grace... Uh, by way of my introduction is something that is so important to God and to man. We cannot do without it. It brings God to us. It brings us to God. But a brief history of the story of grace I mean church history according to because sometimes we wonder when did this grace grace thing start some of us will even say we that we were converted 1970s 80s we never heard about grace before so why are they talking grace grace everything grace finish work grace uh, but we didn't get born again like that after the Lord Jesus departed the gospel of grace that he passed on unto this, to the disciples went all over the world. They had nothing else to preach but the grace of God. And what is the grace of God? The gospel of Jesus' incarnation, suffering, crucifixion, burial, resurrection, and glorification. But serious persecution started and became so much that Christians had to be hiding. They killed too many and left very few remaining. And the few that remained could hardly survive. So, it happened that an emperor in Rome, in Rome got wind of the gospel but he did not fully understand the gospel in true perspective so he said well, why are you killing these people if it's for what they believe they are not hurting anybody now and what they believe looks so wonderful it's sweet why don't you let's make it the what do you call it now the religion of the people. National religion. So they brought Christianity into the government. They made Christianity a state religion, as they would call it. But what they did was that in order to take care of all other religions, because the Middle East has a lot, a lot of religions, and the world at that time. So, they say, okay, so that it will be acceptable to others. Then, they brought in part of um, Eastern religion, the worship of gods, 
then this issue of um, priests not getting married and a lot of other things. That's when they invented the rosary. It has been in the church. I don't want to take your time. I will have told you the whole story. But if you, you can go buy Martin Luther. Go on or search on, you don't even have to buy these days. Go on the net and look for the history of the church. The history of the church. So, that's how they brought Christianity as state religion in Rome. Because Rome was the, the country that was governing the whole world at that time. And they stopped all persecution. But they brought in adulterated gospel. So everybody was coming to church to worship. That's the battle of Catholicism. You see so many things in Catholicism that has no bearing with the gospel of Christ at all. So, what did the state religion bring us? They took us back to law. The law was until John the prophet. That's what Jesus said. But since then, the kingdom of God suffers violence and the violence takes it by force. The true gospel came to be preached from John the, the, the Baptist. But the grace to be able to enter into it was not until Jesus died on the cross. And after Christ died, grace came. I will share with you later. But what happened after the persecution and all this subsided and they made Christianity a state religion, law came back. Because no experience, no gospel was being preached anymore. So law. And that's why in Catholicism, you buy penance. How many of us know what penance? You have heard about penance before. You buy pardon. When you sin, you go to the priest. You confess your sin. Then he tells you what to pay. You pay money. Then you will obtain forgiveness. In fact, it was so bad that some people will plan armed robbery. In fact, there was one story. They planned to, ro to, to rob the person that the, the emperor was cutting away, sent to cut away huge sum of money. So, but they went ahead to buy pardon from the priest to waylay and rob. That was as bad as it went. They buy pardon. Then for your sin, they, you punish yourself. Terrible things. Some of them, they walk on broken bottles. So they think it is by works that we can please God. You know, maybe you've heard of Mormons before or mom. Um, what do you call them? These ones who went into the bush. The, eh? Monks. No, are they monks? Now, monks and nuns are the ones in the con convent. Now, these ones that they are there in the bush, they said if they don't come in contact with human beings, they will not be seen. So, it's because other people, you know, uh, come in contact with them that they see. So they go to lock themselves up. They don't, it's a terrible thing. So people were suffering a lot because they want to please God. That's what adopting Christianity as state religion brought for us. But some years later, you will see that Roman Catholicism is all over the world. Very, very powerful and influential. It was the only religion they know as Christian religion as at that time. But it just happened that God opened the eyes of one, two, three guys at that time. Martin Luther was one. John Hus was another. I've forgotten the name of the third one. Then they saw that, uh, no, that's not the scriptures. Hebrews sent out in about three, four, five uh, scriptures. The Bible says, the just shall live by faith. That, no, it's not by works. 
They killed John Hoos. They burnt him. But Martin Luther was the only one that escaped. He continued to protest. He wrote a lot of uh, things, pro, uh, project, uh, thesis, they call it then, and you know, put it on the door of the church of Roman Catholic Cathedral that it is not by works, but by faith that we shall be justified by grace. So they excommunicated him. And that's what gave birth to Protestantism, Protestant church. So he came out. Then some people also, as he was preaching, some people saw that ah, that's true. Even the we buying we have been buying, we've been paying to for, for we, we've not received anything, we keep on sinning. So they joined him in the Anglican church. That's how the Anglican church started. And it went on. And later, another, two other guys you know, stood up from among and said, ah, it's not only by grace alone. Say, uh, faith without work is dead. John Wesley, the one that started the Methodist church. And his brother Charles Wesley also joined him. So that's how Christianity has been, you know, metamorphosing. Eh? So, a lot of transformation. So, the time of the Catholicism is referred to as the Dark Age in Christianity, in Christendom. Then, but later, after Anglicanism started, Methodists started, again, after the leaders departed, backsliding, setting, they lost the gospel of grace again. And works took over. How many of us who were in the Anglican church before? The Anglican church. Did you ever hear grace preached through the time you were there? They lost it. But that was why they left the Catholic church. That was what brought us out of darkness. Christian dome out of that. But after it, it was the, about the only Christian, the only church in my village when I was growing, but nobody knew Christ. We were not born again because we never heard about grace. All we heard is about the Ten Commandments and a lot of, uh, you know, not only that, oh, occultism, eh, Oboni, which is with everything. But we thank God because you can never kill the gospel. Because Jesus is alive. <laughs> Hallelujah. He died. He rose again. And is reigning with the Father on the right hand of majesty. So, revival again started in Azusa Republic. Azusa in the USA. A woman was the one God used. And you have the battle of Pentecostalism. So that's when we started having all this baptism with the Holy Ghost, gifts of the Holy Ghost, and all that. Before then, in fact, Anglican Church doesn't want to hear about it. You talk about Holy Ghost, they will throw you out of the church. Methodists know, but God is not asleep. He knows his mind for humanity. So he decided to go take us back to Calvary. Even though as he was reviving the church errors were also creeping in from here and there but we thank God that at least in our own era the gospel of grace surfaced again hallelujah praise the Lord we are not going to miss it in Jesus name so grace but as much as it has been brought back there is a lot of abuse and misconceptions. So, I will just share briefly with us this morning. I will touch abuse. I will touch what true grace is. And I'm praying that the Spirit of God will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, grace. Some people classify grace in three types. They say there are three types of grace. The prevenient grace. That is grace of God that is made manifest to us even before you are born again. 
Do you know many of us, before we became children of God, God had been very, very gracious to us. Abby, you've escaped the mouth of lions several times. A lot of, you, you know, I remember a professor, Paula was giving his testimony here one day. He didn't know the Lord. They, he and his friends, they planned to go swimming. But it's in a very big river. So he got there, he didn't find them. Then he decided to do the swimming alone. Then he got drowned. Nobody to rescue him. Then he said, as he was going down, 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 he would say, Lord, God, where are you? Please, if you will rescue me, I will serve you forever. He never knew God. And God sent somebody. And he was rescued. Many, many, many years later, before he really gave his life to Christ. Many of us, we've enjoyed a lot. And sometimes we'll misinterpret that. I say, well, you said I'm not born again, but I'm enjoying God more than you do. You claim you are born again. Hey! It's the grace of God that leads us to repent. And that's what John, I mean, Romans chapter 2, verse 4 say. Can we have that? Romans 2, 4. He said, Oh, or despise thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the rich, the goodness of God leaded thee to repentance. Don't you know that all this goodness that he's showing to you is that you may come to know him eventually. It's not to be taken for granted. The goodness of God is supposed to lead us to repentance. When you say, ah, ah, God, me, jaku, jaku, like this, you are still doing all this for me, please. Show me mercy. Just take me as your own. That's what God expects. So my brother and my sister, if you are here this morning and you are taking the grace, the prevenient grace of God for granted, that is grace before you know him as Savior, please stop it. His purpose is so that you can come to repentance. You come to church, you hear the word, but you will not give your life to Christ. And I don't. I share with you some other time, some time ago, how a man, a full learning man, was pursued by Jesus for three years. They sent the clip to me. I sent it to some of us too. Three years. Jesus would just appear to him, say, follow me. He said, who are you? He said, I'm your savior. Follow. He said, no, I don't need you. I don't need you. Everything I need, I, I have. Three years. One day he said, I'm going to kill this man. Yeah, kill all day. I said, Female, leave me alone. I don't have anything to do with you. But Jesus refused to leave him alone. Hallelujah. He will not leave you alone too. If you are here and you are hearing the gospel and you have not responded, his grace will find you out in the name of Jesus. Eventually, you know what? He could not resist the Holy Spirit anymore. Then he said, okay, me, I'm going to... He knew some pastors in his environment. He said, I'm going to this so-so and so person so that he will tell me what to do. I, don't, I want this man off my back. The Holy Spirit told him when he was... He said, no, don't go there. About five pastors, if I can still remember where... Well, Five pastors. If he wants to go, the, the Bible said, he, he said, the Spirit will say, no, don't go to him. Don't go to him. Don't go. He said, I will tell you where you should go. Eventually, some one that he never even thought about. I can't remember whether that, well, that one is not even a pastor. That's the person Jesus sent him to, who led him to Christ. Yeah, the person is not even a pastor. And that person led him to Christ. So, God's grace is always available for us. He is looking for us. Because he wants it to be well with us. He wants to impart his life unto us. Hallelujah. So, grace you can enjoy 
before you are born again. The second type of grace is, grace is the justifying grace. Because of my time, I will not give you scriptures, but you can go check when you get to Romans 3.24, Titus 3.7. You find there that we are justified by grace. We are justified freely by his grace. And Titus 3.7. Then you have sanctifying grace. The grace of God is also what sanctifies us. Justified, that is, we are made right with God. Your sins are forgiven by grace, not by your works. And then you are sanctified by grace also. Now, praise the Lord. So what is grace? What actually is grace? Let's open to Titus chapter 2. We read from verse 11. Titus chapter 2, verse 11. It says, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men. The grace of God brings salvation. So, what is grace that has brought salvation and appeared to all men? The Bible tells us in John chapter 1, verses 14 to 17. That Jesus Christ became man. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory as of the, um, the, 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 and dwelt among us. Yeah. John 1, 14 to 17. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. That's Jesus Christ. That's Jesus. Verse 17. 17. And for the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. The grace of God that brings salvation has appeared unto all men. So what does grace do? What is grace? Grace is the provision of the life of God and all that it entails. The nature of God, the power of God, the righteousness of God, the goodness of God. The provision of it through the Lord Jesus Christ and his atonement. Through his death, through his burial, his resurrection and his glorification. Yes. That's why he says that grace brings salvation. It appears to all men. Jesus appeared to every man. We have the story all over the world. Unless you don't want to hear. Not only that, the gospel is being preached all over. So that every have the privilege of getting saved. Because Jesus Christ is the epitome of God's love for humanity to redeem us from destruction in this world and in that which is to come. He came, he suffered. He took your place, he took my own. He bore your griefs and your sorrows. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. He bore our iniquities so that we would not suffer the punishment That is grace for you. Jesus, full of grace. The provision of God for you to have God's life. Free of your work. Free of your work. Only by faith in what he has done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Many, many times we, we, we talk about that aspect of grace. And we describe it as God's riches at Christ's expense. That it is the unmerited favor of God. The unmerited favor of God. 
But it does not end there. That grace brings salvation. Because in the first place, it brings us justification. That's the one we read about in Romans 3, 24. With our sins, we can never get into God's presence. You cannot enjoy relationship with him. You can be having his, uh, what do you call it now? Showers. No, not showers now. Showers. Mercy drops. Maybe original, you can call to him when you are sick, he will heal you. But that doesn't mean salvation. Mercy drops. But you want showers of blessing? You want his very life to enjoy? Excuse me, brothers and sisters, you need to be justified. And justification is by grace, not by works. What is justification? That is, all the sins you've ever committed is written off. Because you have put your faith in the finished work of Christ. So, look, with our sins, even with our self-righteousness, none of us can enter into a relationship with God. Unless you are justified. So, justified, to be justified means that you put your faith in what Jesus has done on the cross, that he died for you, you died with him, you were buried with him, you were resurrected with him. You are also seated at the right hand of God with him. So when you put your faith in Christ, everything you have ever committed is forgiven. So you are now standing as somebody that has never sinned before God. He sees you as a saint. So unlike in the Catholic church, you become a saint after you die. They will look at the work you have done. Eh? Work. Then they will say, this one is saint. And they carry the, the bones of dead saints all over. They even sell it as scapula. When you go to Rome, they use it to make penchant. Eh? Scapula of dead saints. You put it on your neck. That's idol worship. That is necromancy. But Jesus calls us saint. Look through the scriptures. Every child of God is called saint, a saint. You are not a saint because you are doing what is good. You are a saint because you have been washed by the blood of Jesus. You have been washed and it's done freely, being justified freely by his grace. Freely. Through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. So, that is what it says. The grace of God, Titus 2, 11, that brings salvation has appeared unto all men. Eh? It brings salvation. If the grace you are having has not brought salvation, you are still a long way off. Oh. If you die, you are going to hell. Not only that, in this life, you cannot live a victorious life. You will always be falling into sin. Because you cannot be born again by your strength, by your own power, by your works, not by fasting, not by praying. It's only by faith in what Christ has done. Then you get born again, you get saved. That's the justifying grace. But the one that has been You've been enjoying before you are born again is prevenient grace. As many of us as have not experienced justifying grace, I pray the Lord will grant unto you that experience today in Jesus' name. Because some of us are relying on the works of our hands. I remember I was talking with a pastor's wife some many years ago. I said, Madam, do you think if Jesus comes today? You will go to hell. Say, ah, I will go. I say, how? What do you know? He said, I go to church regularly. 
Uh, I do this, I do that, I fast, I pray, and so on. That's not how to get born again. You can never be justified by the works of your hand. It is by grace in the Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray that that grace will be available to you. This, it's available to you this morning. That you will take advantage of it in Jesus' name. So, teenagers, young adults, married men and women, your plenty of activities in the church does not justify you. Your sin will still stand against you on the day of judgment if you don't get justified by grace. God has made it available. But you've got to put your faith in him. You've got to renounce your self-effort. You've got to believe that you died with him and resurrected with him. Praise the Lord. Yes. Verse 12. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Now, that's the second dimension of grace. I was talking to you about grace in its true perspective. When you talk about grace today, there is so much an aberration and abuse of grace that you, you may not even want to be associated with the grace gospel. But it's not so. The grace that God has brought unto us through Jesus Christ is not only a justifying grace, not just making you to feel clean. If, even though you have sinned so much, you have done terrible things, but now that you have put your faith in Christ, you gave your life to him, then you feel clean. That's not the end of it. He said, teaching us that denying our glory, that grace teach you to deny our glory, that is sanctifying grace. Sanctifying grace. <laughs> if you, you go about with justifying grace, the grace that took away all your sins like we heard in our song and you don't go on with the grace that makes you holy to become more and more like Jesus I'm sorry for you because you will not last in the grace of God let's look at Hebrews 10 28 and 29 Hebrews 10 28 and 29 He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. In the era of law, just two people witness against you that you broke the law, you are gone. Stoned to death or whatever. Yes, verse 28, 9. Of how much surer punishment suppose ye shall be thought worthy who had trodden underfoot the son of God. Hmm. Look at what this person has done. And had counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified and unholy thing and has done despise unto the spirit of grace. Justified by grace but is now look at him. Is treading the son of God underfoot. How do you do that? When you live a life of lasciviousness, let's look at Jude 1 4. Jude. He said, For there are certain men crept in on our who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. My brethren, God has done everything he would do to make us to have his life. <laughs> Ephesians, no. For Second Peter 1, 3 tells us that God has given us everything that pertains to life 
and godliness through Jesus Christ. Everything. So grace is not only bringing to you free of charge everything that God has and has provided but grace now supplies the divine influence to make you to enjoy them. To help you to enjoy life. To help you to live above sin. To help you to enjoy good health. To help you to overcome poverty. To overcome the flesh. To overcome the world. To overcome bad habits. Pornography. To overcome anger. To overcome envy. To overcome cheating. Grace now makes the power available. You cannot do it by yourself. You cannot sanctify yourself. So if you are going about only with unmerited favor, I receive favor. I'm a, you know, I'm the one that love favor. This month is the month of favor. It will not work. That unmerited grace, that life of God that is made available to you free of charge, it is as you apply what he has done. As you visit Calvary, you focus your eyes on Calvary. You remember that you have been transformed. And you refuse to give heed to the old nature. You will not allow yourself to be controlled by the flesh anymore. That's the way you can enjoy those privileges. The life of God. So, grace is not just a merited favor. It's also divine influence. That is, the power of the Holy Spirit working in you. The ability to live the God kind of life. A life of righteousness. A life of godliness. A life of power. Let's go back to our text. Titus chapter 2 verse 12. Titus 2.12, he said, So that grace that has first of all brought us salvation, what does it do now? He's teaching us. So when you get born again, as you hand over your life to Christ by putting your faith in the Lord, the Holy Spirit comes into you. He justifies you. Then, he now begins to make you to know the things you ought not to be doing and empowers you not to do them. That is grace. He said that this grace teaches us that we would deny ungodliness. How do you deny ungodliness? What is ungodliness? Everything that is contrary to the life of God. Lying is ungodliness. Cheating Stealing. Lost is ungodliness. Envy. Bitterness. Pride. Stubbornness. Anything that contrary to the life of God is ungodliness. Say so we, you know, the grace of God will teach us to say no to ungodliness. So, but it's not by your effort. It, God has supplied the grace, the power. That's why the Bible told us where we read in the, concerning Jesus. John 1, 17. It says, the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. What God is demanding from man is greater than the law. Don't steal don't cheat, don't commit adultery, don't kill. All those things are still for you. It's for your good. Because God knows that if the law is not there, we will destroy ourselves. The people who have upper hand, they will be killing all others. So he says, if you kill, then you must be killed. So that they will not, we will not finish ourselves before Jesus Christ comes to redeem us. He said, if you take somebody's eye out, they should take your own out too. A two for a two, 
an eye and for an eye. It's not as if it will make you to be holy, but at least it will preserve sanity in the society. So that's what Moses brought. But there was no power to live a victorious life. And that's why a lot of killings, they stone people to death. You know, some of us say, that this, the Bible says, thou shalt not suffer a week to live. So you, you curse your, the witches and wizards in your father's house. Go read. Go and read uh, Exodus 22, 23, 24. Even a gluten is not supposed to live. Or gem. People that don't have control over their appetite. The Bible says they should stone them to death. Uh -huh. Disobedient child. He said it should be the father who should first cast the stone. But this is our son is rebellious. So we talk to Ram, so tell you know they hear. Yeah, yeah, is that so? He said, we, you know, he's a, he's, he's, he's a gluten. He's a wine bye bye. Everybody will just gather and they will stone him to death. But thank God for grace. Thank God for Jesus. You can imagine if they are stoning people that eat too much. <laughs> How many of us will be here today? You know, there are some of us who don't have control over our, our hunger appetite. Eh? My people in my dialect, they say, Koma moyo. You know, he never know how to say, I'm satisfied. I'm all right. He, she, he, she eats in her house, visits somebody. They are eating. They say, ah, come and eat. Ah, you sit down and eat. Get to another place. They give him Coke. Than that we, <laughs> like my husband used to say. If we mm, go palm, go to another place, they give mud. Always eating and eating. In the law, you are not fit to live. It means you lack self control. An adulterer is supposed to be killed. But we thank God that the era of grace came. Jesus came, He brought grace. He brought the truth, then He brought grace. What's the truth? Go and read Matthew chapter 5. You see the truth there. That is not only when you sleep on a, a, a man or a woman that you commit adultery. Once you think it in your heart, you're already an adulterer, an adulteress. You look and you feel like doing it. You say you already done it. Because some people, they try to excuse themselves, but I have not yet. Jesus said, once you have thought about it, you have done it. You're already walking around the periphery of immorality. You are looking at pornography, watching it. You're already an adulterer, an adulteress, a fornicator. Say, but I haven't seen the nakedness of only. No. Immorality is in the heart. It's not in the act. So, my brethren, true grace teaches you to deny ungodliness. What else does he do? And worldly lost. Worldly lost. Again, it classified it. Worldly lost. Love of money. So greedy for money that you can sell your soul. You don't mind how you get it. You just want money at all costs. The grace of God will make you to know that ah, ah, you are not a child of God. God is your source. You cannot do that. And when they bring you offers that are sinful, they know you can't take it. The Spirit of God will tell you, you can't take it. He will be wooing you. He will be interceding. You can't take it. But if you do not allow the grace of God to work, God will not force you. Worldly lost. Immorality in all its facets. Lesbianism. Homosexuality. And we need to watch it. See, in those days we used to say, eh, like in our family, our girls, their room separate. Boys separate. You cannot go to boy, guest room or boys room. Even though they are our children. But some people think, oh, you have been too harsh. 
you have been too difficult. We have seen a lot. I have personally counseled ladies that their first sexual experience is by their own sibling, their brother. Not one, not two, not three. Not to talk of this age of internet, pornography in your room, in your bedroom. And some of us are so, I, I don't like to use tough words like daddy do, does, used to do. But there are times that passion makes you to use some words. Some of us are really, really careless. We are very careless. Children of 10 years, 12 years, you give them phone. Before you know it, they are watching pornography. Before you know it, they want to practice it. And the easiest way is their sibling. I'm telling you, we have cancer children that till today, many children that their parents never knew what happened when they were growing. Under their roof, they were meeting with themselves. They were committing fornication. And the parents don't know. So we've got to watch it. Families, fathers and mothers. Eh, I don't have money. I can't rent more than one room. When you finish destroying your children, then you will answer God. We've told you stories here how sending your children to go and do holiday in your uncle's or auntie's place can destroy their lives forever. We have cancelled people that it happened to. It was another cousin inside the same house where they went to holiday to spend their vacation. The cousin came to meet them in the night. They put the two of them together, boy and girl. And the person, this man came and put them on top of each other and taught them to have sex with each other. They didn't tell anybody when they got home. It was for their first time. They, never, they didn't know what it was. The following day, he came again. No, people are wicked. The devil. Some hearts are horrible. Just like we learned during the ladies' conference. Very wicked hearts. Look, what is he going to gain by doing that to these children? Just to destroy their lives. So these children, he made sure they continue to do it throughout the holiday. Eventually, the boy got used to it and he started enjoying it. They went back home to their parents. They continued. Because they were so small, they didn't know it was bad. But as, not only that, when they resumed school, the boy now told his friends, you know, you, they would talk about stories of how you spent your holiday. Then he just told his friends how, what their cousin taught them. What, you know, when they went on holiday. You know what he did? He invited his friends to come and do it to his sister. I'm telling you a life story. So when their parents are not at home, he will bring his friend. And they were having affairs with his sister. Incidentally, the sister is the elder one. He is following the sister. So when the sister was growing, then she started to know that she was being abused. Then it led to depression for her. Because she could not tell the parents and she could not do anything about it. So she became depressed, emotionally depressed. They took her to the hospital, treated her, treated her. They couldn't get any head, headway. Then somebody said, ah, the Popolas are doing deliverance. Why don't you take this girl to the Popolas? That's how they brought the girl. Then we told the parents to go and interviewed her. 
Because as at that time, by the Holy Spirit, we just want to find out what happened in your childhood. And this girl broke down. Broke down. As she told us what happened to her. Now, if we never told you this story, and we say, hey, don't send your child to your uncle, we say, ah, the book was last zone, what it led you. Ah, ah. Christianity, ni me or Quemo le Sheo. I can't do your own Christianity. Eh? Mosuma taught you for you. It's for your good. We know what we they see, oh. We know what we they hear, oh. We are counselors. We cancel pastors. We cancel geos. And we know how much immorality is going on in the church and in families. So, will you take the challenge and watch over the souls of your children? We've cancelled cases in which a visiting family friend and mom prepared food and told the daughter to go and give food to the family friend. She had uh, gone about doing some other things. That family friend had carnal knowledge of her before she left the room. Family friend, the bow So, eh, your small, small uh, daughters, 10 years, you send them to go and give food. You think there are mad men now, mad, that can have sex with three year old girl, old, old girls. How many of us have had it before? Yes, they are mad. They will start fiddling with the girl, fondling with the breast. Doing as if they love the girl. Yeah, come and sit on my lap. And the innocent girl will sit on the lap. This to begin by fondling and then later get the girl prepared. We have seen terrible things. But if you claim to have been born again, you have justified grace. And you are still, you know, messing around with worldly lust. I pity you. It's better to turn right now because you, re- you remember what we read in Hebrews 10, 28 and 29. He said, if those who commit, who broke Moses' law died without mercy, under two or three witnesses, how much do you think God will just be watching somebody who is justified by grace. Abba, look at what it costs Jesus now. His life. And then you, you, you claim you have that grace and you are still messing around. Say how much sorrow punishment. Sorrow. How much more terrible punishment do you think these people are her worth? That is due to them because they are treading the son of foot under the underground again. They are counting the blood of the covenant. We are with they were sanctified an unholy thing. Can you imagine? God has rendered you holy. Then you make nonsense of what Jesus did by plugging into immorality. Some time ago, I was counseling, uh, I think, my daughter-in-law. I said, don't allow anybody to come to you, my granddaughter's bedroom. You say, ha. I said, yes. Not even your brother. Don't say, go and wash the bathroom. Go and uh, take care of their bed. If you can't take care of their room, leave it alone. You say, ha. It looks strange. But we know what we are seeing every day. Another time I called her. I said, 
don't allow any lady to enter their room. That one was <laughs> we know how ladies will teach the children lesbianism. We have cancer people. In fact, they may t- let the, the girl do it to them and they do it to the, to the girl. Terrible things are happening. Protect your soul, protect your children. So even when we were doing the burial ceremony and there were too many people in the house, I called her, I said, nobody sleeps in my daughter's bedroom. Nobody. But when it's about the first soon, they can lose some power. You lay down on Ogbo. So if I don't say all these things here now, you think mommy is too sweet. Kilo day. She ba lo na wala wani. Eh? O ma beji pere un sumo didi yara. Wala ale sum kwe lu wan. Nyo ni je sum be o. Nyo ni je ba te mi je. Praise the Lord. We see too many things. Too many things. But if you claim to be under grace, if you have tasted the grace of God, that grace will teach you to deny what they lost. If you could fair, when it's springing up in your heart, what do you do? Say, no. I'm a new creature, a brand new man. Oh, things have passed away. I'm born again. More than a conqueror. That's what I am. I'm a new creation. A brand new man. Hallelujah. It's not sin to be tempted. Is it? But to yield to temptation. Yield not to temptation. For yielding is sin. Maybe we sing it another time. Each victory we have. You song other to win. Fight my fully onward dark passion subdue look ever to Jesus he will carry you through worldly passion is coming up say no ah no way it can't happen I'm a new creature I am dead and my life is hid in Christ, in God. I can do it again. What does second, I mean, first Corinthians 6, 16 to 19 tells us the same thing. Say, don't you know that your body is what? The temple of God. The temple of God. So when worldly passions are creeping up, Satan is suggesting to your flesh that this is an opportunity to be messing up with innocent children with somebody else that is not your wife hmm? let him know that you are dead but the bible says I want you to read Romans 6 it's very powerful when you get home read it over and over again the bible says he that is dead is free from sin. Even if they put the most beautiful woman on you, you can't do anything. There will be temptations in your working place. Your secretary will tempt you. Your boss will tempt you. Like uh, Potiphar's wife tempted Je- jo- jo- Joseph. But even in the Old Testament, Joseph said, Ah, uh, ah, uh, madam, I cannot do that. How can I do this wicked thing? 
That's what Joseph called it. Wicked. My brother, you are committing immorality. You are engaged in looking for vulnerable girls to destroy. You are wicked. Though. It's wickedness. You cannot love that girl and want to destroy her. And you call it love. What kind of love wants to destroy somebody else's destiny? You will face temptations. Your lecturer may say, unless I see you, you will not go. We've cancelled some ladies. It's terrible. In fact, there was one daddy was involved. We had to call the lecturer. The professor. He said, I didn't know that she's your daughter, daddy. Can you imagine? I didn't know she's your daughter. And some of them are so wicked. Can you imagine? You are befriending this girl. You are destroying her. And she's getting out. She's finishing. But she, the, the lecturer didn't allow her to pass. Ah. So, when the result came and the lady went and said, Sir, what? And he said, Ah. Think about doing your king, That you don't want something that is sweet to finish quick. Can you imagine the wickedness in the heart of men? Take it to your soul. You can't, you can always go, no, reckon with your new nature. But no, no. Paul says, I'm crucified with Jesus. Nevertheless, I live yet not I, but Christ lives in me. I cannot carry Jesus' body to join with these stupid people. You don't know what they have. Some of them are carrying terrible sexually transmitted diseases. They don't tell you as wicked as they are. They know they should not meet with another person when they are carrying trans sexually transmitted disease. But they will go ahead spreading it because they are wicked. And you are in the church. You are having STD. And you are still messing around. You are wicked though. You are wicked. And don't expect that grace will cover you. That's deception. That's abuse of grace. And you know there are some STD now. Sexually transmitted diseases that are not curable. They look for the mercy, so they know they get. So you have already destroyed yourself. You want to destroy other people? That's wickedness. That's wickedness. Brethren, the Bible says judgment must begin where? In the household of God. And if it's so, what shall be the end of the sinner? And they are just. No wonder Paul said, cast out that evil man from among you so that he will not pollute you. So that he will go and face judgment. So please, please, God's grace makes us to deny what they lost. Don't, don't, ah, uh, ah, uh, ya you want now. And don't, don't be attracted by somebody who's not your wife. Be satisfied with what you have. Contentment. Don't be, be attracted to another man's, eh? Another woman's husband. It is wickedness. It's evil. And if you are not married, Abba, where's the fruit of the Holy Spirit? One of it is self-temperance. You don't have to eat what you are not ready to digest. God has given us grace. That's what we are talking about. Grace, the power to live the God kind of life and to enjoy the benefit. That's grace. The provision and the power. So you can live victorious in this terrible world. You can be a victor over sin. 
You can be a victor over immorality. And I would we have sugar mummies now. Eh? They will use money to attract younger guys, boys, men. They'll be spending on them just so that they can have sexual relationship. You are, you, you are done for. If anybody claims to be born again and is living that kind of life, you God show us mercy. You God show you mercy. And there are some worldly lost. You claim you are visiting or taking care of widows. You are sleeping with them. You claim to be a child of God. Yeah. Eh, when you come and talk, you are mopo. Ah. Is that the kind of you they say you should give? <laughs> there was uh, one of her sisters. The husband departed quite a few years ago. So, when, when everybody had departed, this man will come. When she, he knows that it will be this sister alone, will sit with her. Oh, oh, who won a Oh, who won a What is he say? Sorry for this loneliness. Pele, sorry. You are so lonely. Uh, please, what is he looking for? What's his business? And he will not come when there are other people around. <laughs> so, my sister had to tell him. That's his, he said, Baba, am I baby, ma? Please don't come here again. I don't want to see you in my house. People will tempt you. But you cannot because you are a widow. Now, mess your life and destroy your destiny. Shebiana was a widow now. In Luke chapter 2. I think verse 38 to 40. A widow. Seven years only with her husband. And the husband and she never messed around. She abandoned herself to the, to the service of God. Grace will teach you to deny ungodliness. Some of us have excuses. Because my husband is not taking care of me. Ah. Eh, I have no choice. But I told you, told you me. Your husband can't take care of you. That's why you should be committing immorality. I'm sure you have forgotten who you are. If you are actually born again. You don't know who you are. That you will give Jesus body. You will sell it for money. Abba. You are trampling Jesus' blood on that foot. Just imagine it now. All that Jesus did, God is too merciful. But please don't take that mercy for granted. No sinner will go unpunished. That's what I'm saying. So if you are doing it and you are escaping, you are saying, when you would not, <laughs> number one, eh, I'm sorry, pardon me for speaking so much of this. The Bible, the Yoruba Bible say, Agbalagba, Tiban Yoleda, Kiloman Shelesi, Om Buburu Ama Yoshe. When a, a, a man is secretly committing evil, Evil also will secretly be destroying him. There are people, they are doing it underground because people don't know, because they are not caught. They think they are safe. Evil, you don't know, is already biting you. Because God will not watch you destroying other people. And the devil also watching you, you claim you are born again. <laughs> the devil is just waiting for you. When he will give to you what you will never be able to, to, to carry. So why don't we repent? Why should we allow the devil to destroy us? After we have enjoyed the grace of God, all the sins we committed before, he has forgiven. Then you now allow the this. Uh -uh. Galatians 5 1 says, Stand therefore in the liberty where Christ has made you free. Don't be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. You will be made free. 
ki lo tun lo se eran ki la jeri so stop this mess in the house of god they don't preach the kinds of sermon in many churches but we will not spare us here because we want you to go to heaven not only that we don't want ogbuburuko yo se you don't want evil to before you here you don't want you to be destroyed you don't want you to become a laughing stock these people that were in uh, popo last church hey. so they day to they do the kind of thing we don't want it to happen to you that's why we are coming to you like this and we will give you more of it so that you can know how to live victorious lives in this wicked world so you have no excuse oh. teenagers some stupid teenagers they just want to taste the world they don't know that they are not enjoying life they are destroying themselves you are losing your prestige your self image when you sleep around god has paid the price not only for us to know that to engage in worldly lust is evil but that we can have the power not to engage in it go back to my text so that i can conclude teaching that deny ungodliness and worldly lust deny me put away don't allow it don't tolerate it don't give heed to it if the suggestion comes cry out cry out don't allow the, the lion to devour you don't say you did it the first time nobody knew and then you go you keep on doing it if you put fire in your bosom you will be burned too so deny it refuse no matter how pressing then no i can't do it i rather die i share with you my husband did that several times when he was in civil service even as a pastor that people will lock him up pretend they come for counseling is it kosheni i can't i can't it's not possible if you lay you have tasted god's grace it will not be possible but because we are playing we are toying with the grace of god look the real issue is that you forget you forget what grace is you forgot you have been bought with a price you forget that your body is god's temple it's not your own you forgot that jesus suffered for it so you can mess it up so brethren deny ungodliness even if nobody is there don't do it because it's like you forgot the all seen eye of god the little child may not be able to talk but doesn't god see you does not god see you deny it cry out seek for help deny what they lost what they lost exhibitionism today's fashion the church is copying the world instead of setting a standard for the world we are copying the world we reveal we are revealing dresses clothes that people will be seeing what is under perforated laces and some of us we even wear bra that doesn't cover the breast properly that they can see your breast inside your clothes worldly lost excuse me what are you exhibiting princesses queens enira yaba to ma rin hoho ni you see a queen walking naked even till today the queen of england doesn't dress anyhow long dresses covered properly covered 
and with her heart when she's going on official uh, thing. When the, was it the son who was to be married some time ago? They prescribed that anybody who is coming to the church for service must wear hat. Abi, they told all the female, you don't wear hat at the door, they will turn you back. That's, can you imagine? Earthly queen. Heavenly queens, heavenly princesses. Efa Shobora. That's why God created cloth. For you to cover your body. It's not to allow men to fall. I canceled a young man many times, many years ago. We went to minister in that church. And the man came. Was a newcomer. She sat down. He said he sat down. By the side of this lady. The cloth was too revealing. Low cuts, breast out. And they will, sisters, I plead with you. I believe that after today, you will not wear such dresses anymore in Jesus' name. Even in Yarubogan, Etujekan Swanyi Dadakuda, grandmas, you will wear clothes that they, they, they you know, low cut, eh? Backless. He let talent fear you won't you, huh? Ejo, I beg you. If not for your husband, why no? You no do am at home alone. Why are you exhibiting your nakedness? When God created clothes, it was to do what? To cover our nakedness. We lost the glory that covered us. Then God made the cloth so that it could cover us. He made two naked. He didn't make skin pee, skin pee dresses. He didn't make backless. Uh, which one is this one? One arm. People are crazy. I just want to kill Lotu Shele. Crazy people. Should, should gracious women be crazy? Or more long, should you come to my bar? I shall tell you, Lapa. Ah, ah. And you need to buy it. It's fashionable. That's why God created clothing to cover our nakedness. Worldly lost. You want people to see, eh? Above the knee, short, spaghetti. And our daughters, because we are now in the university, and you see all sort of dresses, you want to copy them. I beg you, remember whose daughter you are now. Eh? You are different from them. First Peter 2 9 says you are a peculiar people. You don't have to copy them. They are supposed to see the glory of God and the beauty of God upon your life. And want to ask. People have asked several times, say, Mommy, eh, lo jewelry, eh, lo keti efi kekeri. And you look still so you still look so beautiful. That's how you all are, my sisters. You don't need to add artificial adornments. But because you feel ugly, that's why you wear masquerade. But you are not ugly. It's only you are undermining God's wisdom for creating you the way he did. So, grace denies ungodliness. And worldly lust. So, do you want to overcome tendency to all these things? Will you give Christ a chance in your life today? Will you remember that you have been bought with a price? Romans 6 1 says, Ah ah. Romans 6 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? What's the answer? Verse 2. God forbid. God forbid. Tell the devil, God forbid, when he wants to make you to do those stupid things. God forbid. Don't make it easy for them to rape you. Give them some difficult time. As you cling to Calvary. Say, no, you can't do that to me. I'm a princess. You begin to speak in tongues. 
God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sins live any longer there? I pray for you. Men and women that have found grace in the eyes of the Lord. That have been justified by grace. That you will allow the sanctifying grace to work upon your lives. So that you will become more and more like Jesus. He had women in his cabinet. He never fondled with any. May you allow that grace to work in your lives in Jesus' name. Let's be on our feet. We may continue the rest later. God must be honored, must be honored, must be honored. Jesus must be honored in my life every day. What about you? God must be honored, must be honored, must be honored. Jesus must be honored in my life every day. Hallelujah. God. to prayer. Appreciate God for Calvary, for the grace that brought salvation which appeared not only to Mary, it appeared to you. Jesus revealed himself to you. He gave you grace. He called you to himself. Appreciate God for that grace. Appreciate God for the grace of God. Appreciate God. Appreciate God for the grace that you have found even before you knew God. He was shielding you so that you will not die before you met him. Appreciate God for pre, for pre, pre, prevenient, prevenient grace. Prevenient grace. Appreciate God. Appreciate God for justifying grace. Remember how sinful you were. Even then, God did not throw you away. Ah, you came to God, He forgave your sins. Have you forgotten? Have you forgotten? Can you appreciate God for forgiving all your sins? For Jesus taking away your sins? Appreciate God. I'm appreciating for sanctifying grace. It's available for you. God did not call you to come and live the Christian life by your own effort. God didn't call you to come and to come and live the Christian life, to come and live victorious by trying. He called you to allow him to do it in you. I appreciate God that the grace is there to overcome sin, to overcome immorality, to overcome pornography, to overcome lesbianism, to overcome homosexuality. I appreciate God. The grace is there to overcome loss. You don't have to fall into the hand of the wicked. Joseph refused to fall. Ah, Zeri Balashanda Kori Bosede Matanda Labashede. The pressure was so much, he refused to give in. Said, No, I cannot do it. This is wickedness. I cannot sin against my God. Do you see yourself like that? Inhabited by God. The triune God is living inside you. Can you be conscious of him? When temptation comes, say no. How can I do this and sin against my God? How can I use my hand to be doing these terrible things? How can I do these horrible things with my body? I belong to Jesus. My body is God's temple. Lord, pray that the Lord will help you. That you will apply Calvary whenever you are tempted. Do you know some people are tempted by their parents? We have counseled ladies that their parents were raping. The parents, the, mother, the father is having immorality with the daughter. We have counseled them live. We cancel the one that pregnated the daughter and was trying to cover up by arresting somebody else. But the daughter, conscious, didn't allow her to rest. I pray, my brother, pray, my sister, the Lord will show you mercy. That you will be conscious of the grace that was made available unto you through Calvary. So that you will always pluck to it. You will remember who you are. You remember what Jesus has done. 
that the consciousness of the fact that Jesus paid with his life, his blood was shed. Look at how much he suffered. Abba, shake it, Bobo, yanya, jasa, sonny. Eh? Appreciate God and ask God to help you. That you will never, you will never allow the devil to drag you into sin, to make you to begin to trample God's God's uh, uh, son upon your under your feet anymore. Eh? Ente je Jesus male. Eh? Ente omo lorun male. Pray that God will not allow you to do it again in the name of Jesus. Nobody is there when you are watching pornography, but the all seen eyes of God is there. Can you pray that the Lord, the Lord will help you? That there will be deep repentance, deep, deep repentance, that you will not be able to tolerate sin anymore. You will not tolerate immorality anymore. You will not tolerate any worldly loss in the name of Jesus. You will not tolerate what any the enemy is suggesting to you in any way, any longer in the name of Jesus. Pray and talk to God. Pray and talk to God. Eh? Pray and talk to God <laughs> that you will make it to the end. What will it be? If you keep on living this kind of life, eventually you will live out, you will forsake grace completely. You will check yourself outside of God's love and you will end in hell. Forget about hyper grace. I will talk to you about it later. Hyper grace, it is not true. That once saved, always saved. Pray that God will hold you by the right hand of his righteousness. He will hold you. He will not allow you to, to allow your flesh to destroy you. Pray that the Lord will help you to focus your eyes on him that was crucified for you. That you will constantly see yourself crucified with him. Constantly see yourself resurrected with him. Constantly see yourself seated with him on the right hand of majesty. Pray and talk to God. Pray and talk to God in the name of Jesus. Pray and talk to God in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. I want to pray for you this morning. I don't know where you have the challenge. You have a choice either to keep it to yourself and allow the devil to continue to destroy you. Or you say, Lord, I need help. I don't know what area. It may not be, it may not be morality. It may be. It may be bitterness. It may be anger. It may be fashion, revealing dresses. It may be whatever. But you want God to help you this morning. It's possible you have just been enjoying prevenient grace. That is, you are not born again, but God's kindness is so much upon your life. And you are taking it for God. But you want to say this morning, me Oshema, Lord, I want to enjoy justifying grace. I want to come to sanctifying grace. Can I see your hand this morning up in the sky? You want to enjoy the grace of God that justifies. That you will not again go back to the filthy things that you used to do when you were in the world. Anybody want to hand over your life to Jesus this morning? You want to say, Jesus, here am I. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Is anybody saying that to Jesus? Okay. You are born again already, but you are saying, Lord Jesus, please, I want a new life. I want sanctifying grace. I want to be able to reckon with you what you have done in my life. Every time temptation comes. Is there anybody who has not been tempted? Is there anybody above temptation? No. So, you want to overcome temptation. You want God to help you. That you will never give in to the devil. Temptation in any area. Can I see your hand up so that I can pray for you? you want to overcome temptation? You want Jesus to help you? Anybody? You keep hiding ourselves from ourselves. We cannot prosper. This is the place where God can help you. You want to be helped? Put your hand upon your chest where you are and let me pray for you. You want to overcome. You want God to help you that you will never yield to the flesh anymore. You will call sin, sin. It's wickedness against God and against man. Shall we pray together? 
Father, we want to thank you for this morning. We appreciate, we appreciate you for what you have been doing in our means and what you will continue to do. Baba, we are all here before you. You know us one by one. Even those of us who are pretending as if all is well and yet we are dying. And that's how so many people pretend until they are caught. And sometimes it's too late. Baba, but we know your love. Your love is so deep concerning us. That's why you, can, you could send your son to come and die. That's why you make grace available to cover all our sins that we have committed. You make grace available so that we can receive power not to continue to sin. Baba, I pray for every one of us here this morning. Especially those of us who are identifying that we need help. We need help. Father, send help from Zion in Jesus' name. Amen. Holy Spirit, help your children in Jesus' name. Even those that are not bold enough to identify. Lord, we pray you will show mercy. Show us mercy in the name of Jesus. The more purified saints we have, the more we can affect the world. But if we are sleeping around with people that we are supposed to win to Christ, how can we share the gospel? How can we share the gospel? People know us. For worldly lost. Father, we pray. You will purify your church in Jesus' name. You will sanctify your church in Jesus' name. You will sanitize your church in Jesus' name. When this evil thought comes, Father, help your children to know how to respond. That they will identify with their true nature. The nature of God. In the name of Jesus. That they will identify that they belong to Christ. That they are God's temple. And they cannot defile it. Please help us in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for hearing us. Father, we want to pray for everyone that is in trouble with addiction. Addiction to, to lottery. Addiction to drugs. To alcohol. To smoking. Even to immorality. Some are addicted. Lord, I decree deliverance for you this morning in Jesus' name. I command deliverance upon your soul in Jesus' name. Lord, do we have our children that are not here and they are in trouble wherever they are? Lord, we receive grace for them to live victorious lives. To always remember who they are so that they can live for you. So that they can allow you to live your life through them. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for everyone that is sick in the body. If you are sick, put your hand wherever you have the problem. Baba, you sent your son not only to redeem us from sin, but to deliver us from the cause, the cause of the law, among which is sickness, oppression, afflictions. Lord, Jesus has paid a price. We decree this morning, that all these afflictions depart from the bodies of your children in Jesus' name. Mental illness, emotional troubles, high blood pressure, diabetes, arthritis, eye problems, ear problems, every problem, cerebral problem, problem in the neck, in the brain, in the spine. We command you, be healed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Wherever the devil has planted anything in our body, we dislodge them this morning. In the name of Jesus. We set them on fire. In the name of Jesus. Epilepsy, we command you, be gone. We sent out the spirit of epilepsy in the name of Jesus. We command every problem with the nerves, with the spinal nerves, to be gone. The bones to adjust. Bones of the neck, bones of the back. We command you by the power of resurrection 
adjust in the name of Jesus. Go back to your normal place in the name of Jesus. We relieve all the nerves that have been suppressed, that have been pressed, compressed, and giving pain, causing numbness, causing paralysis. We release you this morning in Jesus' name. You command peace upon everybody. Back pain, you are gone in the name of Jesus. Migraine headache, you are gone in the name of Jesus. Every sickness, every oppression, be gone in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, because you have heard us. We magnify and praise your holy name. Because you will do more than we have asked. We are going into a new week. We receive grace to live victorious lives. We receive divine favor in all our ways. We receive divine protection. No evil shall befall us in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, blessed Lord. We pray that we make your children not to be forgetful hearers. Tomorrow we will be here to learn about improving our income. And all other meetings, you will help us to know the value. So that we will continue to receive what you have provided for us to live victorious life in this world. In Jesus' name. Blessed be your holy name, Lord. Blessed be your holy name, Lord. Thank you, Father, because we have prayed in Jesus' name.